Hey guys, Sage Rover BHA here, bringing you a uh, the third part of this series, InfluxDB, Grafana, and Home Assistant. Uh, for this part of the series, we're just going to talk about mainly how you can get your Grafana graph added into Home Assistant. Uh, so you can view it in Loveless and the web interface and all that kind of stuff. So let's check it out. All right, so it took me a while to try to figure out the best solution for getting our uh, Grafana graphs showing in Home System. Some people recommend setting up camera components uh, that point at uh, the image file for that uh, particular graph. It could work. I had issues getting it to work that way, so I didn't go that route. Instead, I opted for an iframe loveless card, so uh, this is kind of how we're going to talk about setting it up today. Uh, and I'll have links to all the different uh, pages and documentation that I used uh, in the description below so that you can take a look at those for yourself. Let's go ahead and do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. So, of course, uh, for starters, uh, we need to do some modifications to our Grafana Docker container. Uh, now, when I originally set it up, I wasn't even thinking about that, but you really want to be able to bypass the login prompt and everything for your graphs for this to work properly. Uh, so we're going to do that as part of the first part of the setup here. Uh, once we do that, then we're going to install an iframe plugin for our browser. And I'll go into more details on that, uh, on that step, uh, but it got a little confusing for me on that side as well. Uh, once we do that, then of course we will add our Grafana graph into uh, the iframe card in Home Assistant. And lastly, I'll just kind of show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. All right, so again, we set up uh, Grafana last time and uh, it works, everything works great, uh, but we have that username and password prompt, which seems to cause issues when trying to get this set up to show our graphs in Home Assistant. So we're gonna modify our container, uh, and the great thing about it is we use Docker Compose, so it's pretty easy to do that. So basically we're going to edit uh, our Docker Compose.yaml file here, go down to the section that we entered all the information in for Grafana, and as you can see here, I added a new set here for environment variables inside here. You're going to want to add these three environment variables uh, to your uh, Docker Compose file. And again, I'll have these in the description below so you can copy and paste them. But by doing this and then reloading that Docker Compose uh, file, we should be able to then bypass the login prompt for Grafana. So once you get those entered in there, as you can see, I've already done it. So I'm just kind of showing you what I did here. But once you get that done, we'll save it. And then you're going to go ahead and do a sudo docker-compose up-d. This will basically rebuild that Grafana Docker container. We shouldn't lose any of our data because our Grafana data is pointed at a Docker volume, which we are still going to be using. All we're doing is really editing that config file. Uh, that Grafana will use uh, whenever it first loads. Once that is done reloading, if you jump over to Grafana, as you can see here, I don't even get prompted uh, to log in anymore. It goes straight to the home page. And then, of course, I can even click on my uh, internet speed graph that we created last time, and there it is. Everything looks good there. So once we're done with that step and you've got it all up and going, then we're ready to move on to the next step. This took me a while to figure out exactly uh, what the problem was. Uh, so I had I got this all loaded in Loveless and everything, but I could not, for the life of me, get the graphs to show up in Home Assistant. And uh, I messed with it and messed with it and messed with it. And finally, I ran across um, the possibility of having to have an, a plugin for the browser for that to work properly. Uh, so each browser kind of has their own iframe plugin. Chrome has one. Um, Firefox, I'm sure the others do as well. 
Uh, and I'll have the links to the ones I use in the description below. You can basically just do a Google search for Firefox iframe plugin and it'll probably come out. It's probably going to be one of the first couple uh, on the search there. But this is the one that I used for Firefox. And I just loaded it right up, closed Firefox all together, uh, reopened it, and then of course it started working properly. Uh, the same thing for Chrome. So here is the one I use for uh, the Chrome browser. Again, just did a search for Chrome iframe uh, plugin in the uh, in Google search, and it worked just fine. Close Chrome out altogether after you have it installed. Reopen it, and you should be good to go. There is a downside to this. Um, I have not been able to get this to work on my phone with the uh, Home Assistant uh, app or even uh, the browser and stuff on my phone. So that kind of stinks, and I'm sure there's ways to get it to work, uh, but obviously there is not an iframe plugin uh, for the browser and stuff on my phone, so that uh, uh, did not work. But as far as your computer goes, the iframe plugin should uh, allow it to work on your computer. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so uh, I'm not sure if you have to do all these steps, but I'm going to walk through the way I set it up. Um, and like I said, it works well for me. should work for you as well. Basically, uh, for starters, you're going to set the time frame that you want to view. I, I just leave mine the default, which is the last six hours. That's plenty for me. Um, once you do that, we're going to cycle through the different modes here. You're looking for the kiosk mode. Again, don't know if you have to do that, but that's what I did. Uh, and basically, once you have it in the correct kiosk mode, it'll say uh, press escape to exit kiosk mode at the top. That's how you know you're in the right uh, spot. Once you do that, then you can go click on the graph that you want to uh, show in Home Assistant. Click on share. We're going to jump over to the embed tab. And first things first, you want to uncheck the uh, current time range because we want this to update regularly and show the current time whenever we're looking at the graph not just this one specific time frame once you have that in there then you're going to copy the uh, url just the url from the uh, the link down below so you can kind of see what i got highlighted here because that's what you're going to copy because we're going to use this on the next step once you have that copied we're going to jump over to the command line so uh, for me, because I have a lot of custom add-ons for Loveless and stuff, I have to use the command line to edit uh, my Home Assistant Loveless web front end. If you're not doing that and you're not using any custom cards or anything, you can use the web interface uh, for adding components into Loveless. Unfortunately, I can't do that because of all the other stuff I have. So we're going to go through doing it in the CLI. So we are going to edit the ui-loveless.yaml file here, uh, sudo vi ui-loveless.yaml. Look for the section where you want to add this new uh, iframe card. So I have a little test page down at the bottom here. That's where I'm going to add this one just to kind of show you what that looks like. Uh, for the type, it's going to be iframe. And then for the URL, uh, we're going to paste in that URL that we just copied. Uh, just a second ago from Grafana and then we need to add a couple of additional lines to that uh, one of them is refresh equals 10 seconds uh, so you'll put a uh, ampersand refresh equals 10 s and then honestly it looks like I have kiosk listed twice so I don't think you need to have the and kiosk again you do need the ampersand full screen at the end as well and again, I'll have that in the description below, so you can just copy and paste it and put in your uh, URL with the added uh, information you need at the bottom. But once you have that in there, we'll go ahead and save it. And then we're going to jump over to the, uh, the web interface of uh, Home Assistant here. And I don't know that you necessarily have to. You could probably just do a refresh on the page itself. Uh, but I'll go into the uh, configuration and uh, server controls and do a reload location and customizations. And click on that, give it a second to come back up, and then we'll move on to the last step. All 
All right, so here I am on my test page. Obviously, you can see I have a whole bunch of broken links in here. That's okay. I don't use this page for anything other than uh, playing around and testing out things in Home Assistant. Um, but as you can see here, down in the middle, uh, the bottom of that middle section there is my Grafana iframe that I just added. This is the graph for internet speeds. It has both the download and the upload, and it is embedded right there into that little section of the Loveless iframe card. Pretty cool. That's it. I mean, that's what we're looking for, and that's what we have working now. So, I mean, you can add that with any uh, graph in Grafana. Basically, you will follow the same steps I did here for whichever ones you want to add in the Home Assistant, and they should work. Again, the downside is, is I have not been able to get it to work properly on the iPhone uh, app or uh, on the phone itself. I have not tried on Android, though I have a feeling it's going to be a similar issue there. But that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want to be able to get those graphs working, at least in your uh, browser on your computer, this should get you there and you can display the cool looking Grafana graphs in Home Assistant. Let's go ahead and do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So of course, uh, for starters, we modify our Grafana Docker container so that it would bypass uh, the authentication. So you wouldn't have to log in every time to get into Grafana. Uh, once we did that, we installed the iframe plugin into our browser. And I showed you what that looked like for Chrome or Firefox. Once we did that, we edited ui-loveless.yaml and added in our Grafana graph that we wanted to see. And lastly, I showed you what that looked like in action. That's the end of the video, guys. Uh, again, uh, this will at least get you most of the way there as far as adding Grafana graphs in the Home Assistant and uh, hopefully uh, allow you to play around with it some and see how that works. I want to thank everybody that has donated to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Uh, every little bit helps. And again, if you haven't had a chance, check out the Teespring uh, merchandise page. The link is in the description below uh, for all your Burns Home Automation merchandise. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I will see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks!